knowing how to use microsoft excel to actually model a binomial distribution is actually so cool right now wait till i tell you that you can actually use spss to also model the concept of a binomial distribution hi and welcome to another youtube video and in today's video we are going to be using ibm spss to actually model the concept of the binomial distribution we are going to be using the example we used in the last video in the previous video in this same video so that we can have the same results and compare them and the example was that christian ronaldo a football player is going to be playing a total of 12 penalties and he have a 50 percent chance of scoring the penalties then we can actually use a binomial distribution to actually model the situation so if you haven't watched that video i actually suggest and advise you to actually watch that i'll be linking that video around here and also in the description you can just check that out so without further ado let's get into spss and actually model a binomial distribution So here we are on IBM SPSS and the example we are going to be using is the same example we used in our last video where we talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, where we talk about a football player which is a Cristiano Ronaldo trying to play a total of 12 penalties and uh, we want to model these penalties with the concept of a binomial distribution. We were also told that the probability of scoring a penalty is actually equals to 50% which is actually 0.5. So we actually want to use a binomial distribution to actually model this success. He's going to be playing a total of 12 penalties so that simply implies that the success is going to be starting from 0 and ending at 12. That is, there's actually a chance of scoring 0 penalties which is how we can have 0. There's a chance of scoring 1 penalty. There's a chance of scoring 2. So we do that 3, 4 down to like 12. So right here we have all of the success that we can actually attribute to him scoring the penalties or not. So we can actually decide to like um, change this name. It's just VAR0001. So we can just decide to change to like let's say success. And then I can remove the decimal place to zero. Just make it zero decimal place. That is actually okay. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six down to like twelve. So we need to get a probabilistic value attached to each of the successes. That is the chance of him scoring zero penalty. That is he didn't score any. The chance of scoring one. The chance of scoring two. Down to the chance of scoring twelve. Please note that the probability of scoring each penalty is actually equals to fifty percent, which is actually zero point five. So all we have to do is to come to the transform right here click on compute table uh, compute variable rather and it gives us this dialog like this box so we can see something here that says a function group then we actually have to locate the pdf which is this uh once you click on pdf it actually uh brings out this special dialog that you can see a lot of distributions right here so we look for binomial we have pdf binomial and uh, it gives us this uh you know this sentence right here that kind of guides us is that we have pdf binomial we have quant and we have prob so that means uh for spss it is modeled on the quantity which is the success the number of trials and the probability of success so right here it's asking us for the quantity that is the success i can just double click on the success and it actually just you know come right here or i can use this arrow to actually do just that so the next thing is that it's asking us for the number of times that the experiment was performed and that is actually 12 and then the next is the probability of success so we have that to be close to 0 0.5 as you can see the okay sign has not been uh made blue like to give us a chance to keep going because we've not given the new variable a name so we can just call it a uh, p binomial that is probability of the binomial experiment and then after doing that you can see that it has actually lightened up to like blue for us to like you know get on okay so we click on okay uh it actually runs the code as you can see and if you go back to your data set you can see that we have this okay so it's kept in two decimal place we can just decide to like uh keep this to like uh four decimal place it actually makes sense so we have it in four decimal place so we had we've actually gotten the probability of success attached to each of the so the next step is for us to actually visualize it and, and like i did with excel i actually used uh, a scatter plot so i can actually come to graph uh, come to the chart builder and it brings out this dialog so i look for the scatter plot i click on this or you can actually drag it you know it actually works so on the x axis i have the success which is actually here and on the y axis i have the 
p binomial that is the probability of the binomial uh, experiment in general so i keep this right here and once i click on ok it runs the code and uh, it gives me the scatter plot of the distribution and as you can see it has the shape of a normal distribution just like we did when we used microsoft excel you may not see this shape perfectly so you can decide to use like a bar chart to actually see the shape properly so so we can still come to graph click on chart builder and this time we just come to the bar chart so we click on the bar chart we click on this okay so we bring the success right here as usual and then we bring this right here and then we click on ok and as you can see it actually gives us the shape of a normal distribution and we can actually see that we've been able to like visualize the binomial distribution so we can also do the same thing for the cumulative binomial distribution let's go back to our uh, worksheet so we can do the same thing we can do the same for the cumulative what we have to do is to come to transform as usual uh, we compute the variable so this time we locate cdf that is the cumulative uh we try to locate cumulative right here so you see right here so we locate cdf binomial so we double click on that we have to like erase all of this so let's just erase all of this then we call we double click on this so it's still the same thing it asks us for the quantity it asks for the size of the experiment and the property of success so we can just click on success and take it there then our n is actually equals to 12 and uh, our b our p rather is actually equals to 0 0.5 and uh, you know we can now call this cumulative we can call it cumulative then underscore binomial okay so we can click on ok and once we do that it runs the code again as you can see it runs the code right here then we come back to this and it gives us all of those values then we can actually convert this to like four decimal place it's very important sorry all right so we come right here and it has given us the cumulative binomial for all of the successes from 0 down to 12. we can decide to visualize this also we can have graph chart builder then we actually let's use the scatter plot first and then we double click on that so we have the success right here and then we take this out back and then on the y-axis we actually have the cumulative right here and once we click on ok it runs it and we can see the shape that it gives to us just like we did with microsoft excel and you can also use a bar chart right here or a bar graph to actually visualize this also uh, we can come to chart builder uh we click on the bar the bar chart uh, we have success right here and then we have the cumulative right here then we click on ok and as you can see it gives us we can see the outline right here so it actually gives us the shape that we had in microsoft excel and this is how you can actually model your binomial distribution both the probabilistic value and the cumulative value using ibm spss if you learned something new from this video and you actually enjoyed this video i would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel do you have some questions for me or do you think i actually missed something please go down to the comment section and actually drop your questions and comments i would be willing and be happy to actually attend to them thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one where i'll be using arrow studio to actually model a binomial distribution bye for now